And then, whoa, bam, we've got this beast coming up next. Probably about as tough a drawing as you're likely to see early on in your engineering drawing class. You'll advance on to harder drawings later, but this is pretty tough right when you're starting off, so I'm gonna walk you through it line by line. Or even drawing the bounding box isn't gonna be super easy, right? The Y direction length is really easy to count, size of six. The X direction depth of five is pretty straightforward. We can see those just from the very front. But the height is actually at the back corner. And sometimes isometric drawings can sort of have optical illusions in them. So I recommend when counting something that's not immediately obvious to, to actually just be careful and just make sure your drawing is really clear because it's easy to sometimes to measure from the wrong location. So I'm gonna actually draw this little like staircase along that sort of left back sort of edge in order to see that that back height is at a height of five. And with that, I can finish the bounding box and make sure that my drawing is appropriately scaled to fit on the page before I even draw a single visible line. You gotta make sure your drawing's actually gonna fit on the page and that you're not gonna run out of room. You do not wanna get halfway through your drawing and realize you have to start over because the second half isn't gonna fit anymore. Now for easy drawings, I said you should just, just Pick a side, pick, you know, front view, top view, right side view, just pick it and go and just finish it. More complicated drawings like this one, I think it's actually easier to just hop around from view to view and just draw what's easiest. Because sometimes you're actually gonna need something from a different view to finish the view that you're working on. So you're probably gonna have to, to mix and match a little bit. This does make it easier to forget something to miss an important feature. But once we get going, we'll actually check the drawing in a methodical way at the end to make sure you didn't miss anything. So the easiest place to start is gonna be the front and right side because both front and right at the very bottom have this wide flat rectangular base that you can just draw in first right away. And all right, you're making progress. The right side view, I'm looking at a big slanted angled surface, but on the front side view, at least there's another couple of vertical surfaces. So I'm gonna go to the front side view first, and let's focus on that one first. So I've got this wide flat section, and I'm kind of marking some heights. On the left hand side, it's a height of one. That shorter section in the middle is a height of 0.5. And then the top of the triangle piece is at a height of 1.5. And that's 1.5 above the line that I've already drawn, not above the very bottom of the shape. So I can draw this section on the front view. So now I'm looking at that big vertical face that's sort of kind of in the middle of my front view. It seems like there's a vertical section there, but I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna be able to draw that yet. And the problem is this highlighted line. It's gonna show up as a horizontal line on my front view but I don't know how far down from the top it is because that top surface above it is, is at an angle. So this is where you need to play sort of loosey-goosey and be willing to switch to a different part of the drawing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the right-hand view and work on that red vertical face. Because if I can draw that red vertical face on the right view, it shares a corner with that highlighted line that I'm gonna try to draw on the front view and it'll help me draw the front view. So this small highlighted line, right, that looks like it comes in a length of one, I can sort of project that forward and see where that intersects the very right side surface. And I can draw that line. And I know the vertical right side of this face goes all the way up to the top, so I can darken that in also. The diagonal line though, what I'm gonna use is that that little short diagonal section is actually at the exact same slope as that really long diagonal section that's over on the sort of left side. And that triangular section, you can count out the squares, it's got a length of four and then it goes down three. So I can draw this in orange as a construction line to represent that big diagonal surface. So for my red vertical surface, I can just draw my line upwards until it hits this diagonal line. And that corner where my vertical line I just drew of this red surface hits that big diagonal, that I can now project back onto the front view, and that's gonna help me a lot on the front view. This big L-shaped angled face starts on the left-hand side, touching the part that I had already drawn, right? Horizontally at the top, you can count four squares inwards. And then how far down from the top of my front view goes, I can find that by projecting over from the right-hand view, right? Features are gonna line up horizontally between the front view and the right side view. So now I can see this visible L shape from the front. And I can kind of wrap up this section by this highlighted line on my isometric projection is just gonna be a vertical line right there on my front view as well. 
So the front view is actually done at this point because the right hand side is just a big empty section, right? It's just a big cutout that goes all the way through. So now that the front's done, let's make some more progress over on the right side view since we already got that one started. So the blue shape on my isometric drawing corresponds to the diagonal line on my front view. And so really I'm matching the top of my triangle on the front view, right? The top of this slanted line on my front view is gonna give me the top on the right side view as well of this blue shape. And notice that this actually goes above the orange diagonal line that I had drawn earlier. And this makes sense because if you look at the front view over on the left side, that horizontal line is only two squares up from the bottom, right? That's the bottom of that angled surface. But kind of in the middle of the front view, the top of this triangle is higher up than that. So when looking from the right, that front angled surface should block part of that triangle view that's behind it. And that's the part to draw next, is gonna be that hidden surface. It's sort of partially visible, partially hidden. It's this blue vertical face. So this highlighted line is at a height of 1.5 from the very bottom of the drawing, which corresponds to the sort of lower line over on the front side view. And when drawing the diagonal line, notice that part of it does have to be drawn uh, as hidden, since it'll be behind the that part that was in front of it. So last thing, I've got a my right side view has a big empty nothing on the left hand top part of the right side view. But looking at the isometric view, you can see there actually is kind of a big just hole cut out up there, right? There's not actually any pieces there. So that being empty on my right view is, is correct. Two thirds of the way done, almost there. Start off the top view by just drawing the plain rectangle that's down at the bottom, because at least there's one easy part to this drawing. There's one other flat face that I can draw is this rectangle in the middle, and I can kind of draw that using the miter line. So from the front view, I can just project straight upwards. And then from the right side view, I project upwards and over across the miter line. And that helps me find the four points that mark that rectangular surface. So there's only two surfaces left, but they're both angled. So I'll start off with this blue one first. So a diagonal line drawn on the front view is gonna represent a face on the right side view and a face on the top view. So this blue surface that you see on the isometric projection, we're gonna see that same shape on the right view and the same shape on the top view also. It might be squished or stretched, but it'll be the same shape, just squished or stretched. And the key to drawing this is gonna to be to mark that big blue dot, that point that sort of marks the corner of this cutout. If I trace that location up from the front view and across the miter line on the top view, I can mark where that point is located. And from there, it's just horizontal and vertical lines to, to finish drawing the shape, as long as I know where that particular point of interest is located. And last thing is that big L-shaped slanted surface which already most of it's kind of drawn, so I'm just sort of finishing up with the last couple of lines. So erase any parts of the bounding box that you don't need, any construction lines, miter line, whatever you don't need to be part of your final drawing. And there you go, that's probably the toughest drawing you're likely to see early on in your engineering graphics course. If you're a beginner engineering student and you can make this drawing, I would be very impressed. This is actually really challenging for a beginner. If you want to do practice drawings with an oblique surface, this is one that's sort of rotated in X, Y, and Z. Then click on the video that you see on the screen here. You're going to need to draw front, top, and right side views for a given isometric drawing that has oblique surfaces.